And I remember Ted Koppel coming on. He was Genesis. Tell us what, what else happened there. Well, he interviewed three astrophysicists right after the discovery was announced. And uh, he was looking at these quotes, and so he started off the interview by quoting Genesis 1-1. And then one physicist said, well, let's quote Genesis 1-2-2, and he did, and then 1-3 making the point that uh, this has significance that goes beyond just the simple beginning of the universe. This is really demonstrating a creation history from the very beginning to the present moment, and it's consistent with what the Bible is, is teaching. Jason, do you enjoy the fact that these astronomers that were atheists are, because of the evidence that they're observing, are being drawn across the line to say, you know, I think that a transcendent causal agent, namely God, must have brought this into existence. You know, I think it's important that we lead people to the right God. And the Big Bang God is not the God of the Bible, because the Big Bang does not agree with the Bible in terms of not just the time scale, but also the order of events, the causal agent of the universe, and even the future. Um, you know, the Big Bang is not just a story about the past, but also a story about the future. And it differs from what the Bible has to say about the future. How does it differ, <clears throat> Jason? Well, and according to the Big Bang, the universe will continue to, well, in the most popular model, the flat universe and so on, it will continue to expand forever and eventually die what they call a heat death, where basically we run out of, of usable energy. And this happens uh, vastly in the future, much more than Big Bangers believe about the amount of time in the past, very far in the future, whereas the Bible talks about a, um, a judgment and a restoration and a restoration back to paradise. So it's a very different future than what the Big Bang teaches. Well, also, I, the Earth starts as a molten blob in, in the secular models of solar system formation, whereas in the Bible it starts as a ball of water. It's very different. So we, we, we can't just say, well, they both teach a beginning. No, there's lots of differences. And I, and I think... Well, well let's, 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 let's get an answer <coughs> on that one first. Okay. Well, in terms of the ball of water, it doesn't actually say that. It says there's water on the surface of the Earth. And so this would be consistent with standard Big Bang cosmology that the Earth starts off with a core and a mantle and a crust with water beyond that. It well, there's no plate. water on the Earth originally, according to the secular uh, formation scenarios, as I'm sure you know. That's not true. I mean, uh, standard uh, geophysics says that there, the Earth begins with water over the whole surface, and it's plate tectonics that causes the continents to grow thereafter and eventually produces, as we see in creation day three, uh, a planet that has an ocean and a continent. So if you want to see that laid out in detail, the book uh, Rare Earth, written by an atheist and agnostic, uh, a couple of years ago kind of lays out uh, the history of the growth of the continental land masses where it goes from zero to three percent uh, in the first billion years and then from three percent to twenty percent in the next uh, two and a half and then it gets up to the current twenty nine percent all thanks to uh, plate tectonics and they tie it into the faint sun paradox how the sun gets uh, dimmer and then it gets brighter and you know from a creation perspective this is a god that's perfectly compensating for the changes in the plate tectonics, the changes in the uh, light output from the sun by creating just the right life forms at just the right time and also removing life forms thereafter that no longer fit the uh, changing conditions. Yeah, you know, there's lots of assumptions behind the whole area of plate tectonics. That's people's interpretation. I mean, uh, Dr. John Baumgartner, who um, using a uh, supercomputer, has modeled uh, plate tectonics in regard to it happening very quickly in regard to subduction and so on, and that, that particular model uh, makes sense of, of the evidence. In other words, th there's a whole different model that looks at catastrophic